Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of my BB-8 project version two. I previously built a ball balancing robot. Have a look in my channel for that, which is my first version of BB-8. And now I've decided to do something much more sensible, which is a device that drives around inside the ball instead of in the head. So last time I got as far as building this um, inertial measurement unit stabilized ball. It has two inertial measurement units in. Uh, which control acceleration and deceleration essentially to stop all of the rocking. So that worked quite well in part two. In part three, I went ahead and built the head stick to actually move this head backwards and forwards. And that's got another inertial measurement unit on it that means when the head tilts in one direction, it still maintains center of gravity by subtracting a little bit from the internal hub. So I built this mechanism that slides backwards and forwards. And I had a look at this globe, or at least half a globe, which is exactly the right size for the head. And today we're going to try and sort out some of the niggling issues and also get an actuator so we can actually move that head backwards and forwards or at least put it in one place and leave it there. My head is driven backwards and forwards by these two servos pushing a rod and that pushes this piece which is pivoted down here side to side and that makes the head carriage move side to side and I was trying to use that to stabilise the droid last time. One issue I was having when I was driving, so um, even with this sat on its end stop is there's a slight gap in there, so I was explaining this last time, um, this piece can move quite a bit, and that causes the head to sort of wobble as it goes along, as the magnetic friction and the friction of the wheels on top sort of make it drag, and then it catches up again, so it wobbles along as it drives. So I just need to print a little piece to go in here to minimise that gap. I also talked about dropping more ballast into the base. I've got some lead shot here. So I was going to insert that down as low as I can by attaching it to either side of the battery box pieces, which are just here, and making tubes I can put shot in in the four corners. So I'm going to print something for that and see if that helps with stability as well before I try and solve it with the inertial measurement units anymore. So I've made these containers to put the lead shot in. I've also made lids which I can seal on the top. And those should fit pretty well. Which means I can keep the lead shot from spilling out if I need to. And the plan for these is to stick them in just in here. They can go fairly low down. So we can solve and weld those onto the existing ABS with acetone. And distribute the lead shot evenly among them. And hopefully this lot will fit in all four. Right, lead shot is installed into all four of those containers, so I'm going to solvent weld the lid on to those before I test it, so in case it tips over it doesn't all tip out into the ball. Alright, so here we go again. So I've got this um, sort of tuned up. I've had a go at the PID loop and tried to put some better settings in, so it's pretty stable now. Drives forward if I push it and stabilizes itself out, so that's quite good. Um, driving back isn't quite as stable, and what I've done this time is pin the head forwards so this head stick doesn't flap around, so it's constantly fixed forward. And I've tuned up that PID loop so that uh, basically it's quite good going forwards and stopping, but it's not quite so good going backwards, at least with the head in that position. Once the actuator's in and I can flip the head back to facing the direction of travel, it should work just as well. I've also for now disabled the stability I mentioned last time, the ability to automatically move the head around to try and make it stable. So for now I've just got full manual control over that. Um, and until I've actually uh, sorted out the sides of the ball, I'm not gonna do anything with the stability there basically because this keeps slipping off this very thin barrel shape. It should move much further and I think that's gonna work better. Uh, but nonetheless, it does seem to work. The there is a bit of wobble in the head. Part of that is mechanical, um, because these are just held on with elastic bands, plus the, the, still a little bit of wobble on that slot that I fixed up earlier in this episode, and the rest is the magnetic um, slack between the magnets, and I've left space for another pair of magnets, top and bottom, so I, hopefully I can hold that on more securely. Um, in fact, if I go at the right speed, the head runs perfectly smoothly, so let's just give that a go. There we go, that seems not too bad. I'll just bring that back. As I say, backwards isn't quite as smooth, but um, 
works relatively well. Of course I can still throw this about if I want to, but it should stabilize itself out relatively quickly. Um, so there's still some skill involved in driving to um, drive this backwards and forwards and slowly accelerate and decelerate. And it can go quite fast as you can see. So probably much faster than it needs to in fact. And I can stop suddenly, but then it does uh, rock for a bit before it stabilizes out. But I'm pretty happy with it so far. Obviously things are gonna change slightly as uh, we get more mass on the top here. And I'm interested to see how that works out. And I really need to get this head actuator arm in. So at the moment you can see, if I push this, the head does rock forward. And that's because it's fixed to the hub, which is trying to stabilize so that the outside of the ball stays still. So once the head actuator is in to push this head backwards and forwards, we can actually um, apply some extra stability. So the inertial measurement unit on the head stick can be used to keep that angle constant. So as it, if it stops suddenly and the head falls forward, I can actually compensate by pulling that actuator back to try and keep that head at a constant angle. And of course, I'll be able to put it right back in the middle for turning on the spot, which still works, but it's obviously spinning off center because the flywheel isn't parallel with the ground at the moment. So not too unhappy. I think it's pretty good. As stable as I can expect for this sort of design at least. I also made this part to hold my dome on, which fits quite nicely on here, and obviously that whole thing rotates. If I rotate the gears inside, you can see that rotates quite nicely, and it's got a proper recess there to go in this head, which has got the hole in, and this is the one that's got the brim round the bottom to put the skirt on. And that fits on there quite nicely. So let's have a look at those gears. I printed various gears in different sizes and ended up with this one and hopefully this is going to sit back in here. It's got an offset hole which is going to act like a big servo horn pushing that thing backwards and forwards. So um, with the head on top now, that has quite an influence on making it rock over, so I probably don't need, need that much motion. I was tempted to use servos again to push this. The only thing is with pushing this backwards and forwards, it has to pull up again as it slows down, so there is quite a lot of torque required. So instead I'm using one of these motors, which is a 300 RPM gearhead motor I got off eBay. It came from China and I've built this gearbox for it to go in. So uh, that is going to fit together like so. And that is going to be fitted in the back here under this platform. And inside it will be this gear rotating on two bearings driven by the gear on that motor. So that should give me quite a lot of torque. And then I will have a lever coming from there up and onto the pivot point I put on to push this back and forward, even if it's only a tiny amount. Now the uh, diameter here, which will be between the hole and where it would be if it's on the other side, is about 60 millimeters, which isn't much travel, but in fact that is all of the travel from here to here at the moment. So if I can get away with less than that, then the motor is more than capable of doing it and moving further if it needs to for dynamic stability. Here's my gearbox assembled, so it's just one gear and the motor turning it there. And if we just put some power on it, it seems to run okay. There's a bit of a rattle, which I think is just the black gear isn't quite as clean all the way around. There's a bit of the brim stuck on it still, but it runs okay. Whoops. And um, seems to have quite a lot of torque. I can squeeze that quite hard and it can still turn. So it should be fine for moving that head backwards and forwards. So let's get that mounted and put a shaft in to push that other lever. So that gearbox is installed. There's the motor, which doesn't run on the rim. It's fine. Um, that's the bearing where the gear is on the inside, which you can't really see from here. So basically I've used this three mil piece of steel to go onto that hook and that works fine. There's loads of torque. Um, it runs incredibly quickly, so the next thing is to PWM control it and control it to keep dynamic stability. So I've upgraded to an Arduino Mega, which has got more PWMs on, so I can run all the things.
What I've now done is applied stability to the head stick with its accelerometer so it always stays upright. So if I turn that on, there's a bit of an annoying PWM buzz because it's right in the middle. But if I roll this now, you should see the head tries to always stay on the top and you can see that moving. And if I just tilt the camera up, you should be able to see the head always tries to drive to the middle there. And you should be able to see that stick moving, trying to compensate inside. So that works pretty well. Um, and that's pretty good as it's driving. So if I now turn on the actual main drive, then we should see that obviously as I push it, it will go the way that I want it to. And the head should stay upright all the time and it's actually quite compliant. So um, if I push this around, it's a bit like a living thing that sort of goes where I want it to. Um, and if I drive this up and down a little bit, you should be able to see that head stick trying to compensate as it goes. So hopefully you can see that. There we go, big gap. Drive forward and decelerate and it pulls up. And it's trying its best to keep the head dead on top at the moment, so I may adjust that leverage angle so that it's uh, mounted forward. And I still need some magnets to stick that head on a bit more firmly. Most of the wobble you see is in the magnetic attraction. And I can modify this position manually as well. So that's pushing it forward. And of course that makes the uh, inside hub go and move backwards to compensate or in the opposite direction. And that works pretty well. I've got the other axis still working so I can move side to side. And I've also got the rotation sorted, so my head will spin round. So that works pretty well, and I can still spin on the spot and move the head at the same time. Just like the real BB-8, so let's give that a drive. All right, so uh, we've got all of the features here. So if I give it a push, it goes forwards, and it should try and keep that head stick upright does have a tendency to roll back a little bit and that's because of the motor and the gearbox I put in the back but I do need to put speakers and an amp in the front for the sounds so hopefully that will balance it up a bit. Turning on the spot pretty much works. So uh, I'm not too unhappy with that. I could probably do with some more ballast in there but I can turn the head and things at the same time if I want to and the head doesn't affect it in any other way so that looks pretty good. So um, if I just give this a bit of a drive, let's just put him back over here. And uh, hopefully when I pull away, you should be able to see this head stick trying to stay upright and pulling up again at the end. And we'll see how much uh, length I've got on the shots to do that. So putting both forwards, driving forwards, and hopefully pulling up again to stop. So that should be keeping the head perfectly on top which almost works. I may um, adjust the length of the lever to pose that slightly more forwards, although I can push it all the way forwards, which works much better for driving backwards, of course. And there we go. So it's fairly smooth running. Not got too many issues there. The head wobble, of course, I just need some more magnets. And everything's good. Um, and of course, the side-to-side -side stabilization will eventually do more, hopefully when I um, don't run off the edge of the head. Well, hey, so yeah, we definitely need some more magnets in there. That's a bit of an issue at the moment. So that's the end of part four. In part five, I'm definitely putting more magnets in the head. I've currently got these two magnets in the head and two in the stick, and these are 20 by 23 mil rare earth magnets. I've got another pair to go in there, so that should double the magnetic attraction and stop that head lurching as much as possible and stop the head falling off. They're pretty strong right now. Uh, but that will double the magnetic force, so that should be pretty good. I'm also going to be attempting to put some sounds in and putting the sides on the ball, which is going to be a 3D printed frame. And I've said I want to have opening panels on there, and I also need access to get inside to change batteries and things. So those are going to have to be removable in some way, so it's going to take me a bit of time to think about that. 
So I'm not sure when the next episode is going to be. It may be two weeks from this one. All right, so don't forget to check out my other projects as well, including my 3D printed Star Wars R6 droid, the first version of BB-8 that I did, and some of my Iron Man projects, including Project Ultron, which is another new project.